A few months ago I made a video about this particular device. It is a heater flat actuator from a Mercedes Sprinter, part of the climate control system. And my mate Andrew sent it down for me to have a look at because his climate control all went faulty. Now, he did wonder whether there was anything inside here that was could be repaired. He'd butchered it apart and broke off all the tabs, etc., and took it apart. Hopefully, I can do the same. Huh. There we go. And I took all the innards out and uh, sort of made a video of it all. And he wasn't convinced that the little motor that went in there was a stepper motor when I told him. He thought it was something you could just apply a voltage to and it would start spinning round. So I proceeded to um, make up a breadboard. And here's the breadboard. There's the motor that came out of the actuator and there's another stepper motor over there. Similar size but actually different. That's a unipolar motor and this is a bipolar motor. Now there's a difference and that's what I was going to explain. But while I was preparing this up he sent me two more actuators which I shall show you now. And here they are. He left the, uh, these are the ones he collected from the dealers when they changed them over. He wanted the old parts to prove the work had been done because he was claiming on a guarantee, vehicle guarantee. Now, on this little Mercedes label that's on the wrapper, on the label you should be able to see the words stepper motor. So there we have it. Inside these things is a stepper motor. So the breadboard's a bit pointless at this stage. Now because I moaned at Andrew for butchering the thing apart, he said to me, try getting these open without breaking them. I looked at them and I thought, well they look brand spanking new. Almost. And furthermore, I checked, checked the little pinouts on the, on the connectors here and compared them with the results that I got for the first, uh, the first one I got, which is this one. Now let's tip out all the bits because otherwise I'll lose them all, if I haven't lost them already and perhaps that's the most important bit which is the bottom end of the chip that was in there. I have the actuators in the same orientation and I'll explain the pinouts on there. That's earth, uh, negative voltage. The two centre pins have uh, one ohm resistance between them and the outer pin here is the positive voltage. So if we look with a meter we'll find that between the two outside pins there's a diode drop. Diode is there to protect against reverse voltage spikes caused by um, back EMFs. Now that all said I covered all this in the other uh, in the first video and I'm not really want to, don't really want to repeat it all. The thing I would like to say is that I tested both of these and they were identical to the first one I've done. So I don't think there's anything wrong with them. I think that the um, I think my own thoughts are that the these two are perfectly okay. This one which both Andrew and I butchered, uh, uh, was okay, but is no longer so. Um, and I 
they are an expensive item and if they are okay I didn't want to damage them further so I looked on AliExpress and I found an identical version well at least identical in shape bearing in mind that the, the others the, the others came from a, a Mercedes Sprinter and this was purchased as bit coming from a Mercedes A class now this one didn't cost too much money so I can sort of get it apart I've got three tools for doing the job there's a spoon a knife but most essentially a scalpel now if you're going to use a scalpel please be very careful um, that's where are we now why do we need the scalpel let's see if we can zoom in a bit on this where the little lugs came across the body uh, to stop them from being depressed again there's a little plastic bar in the body and that needs to be part away gently as you notice I'm cutting away from myself now I'm only demonstrating on a broken unit so that you can see that it is sort of possible to pile that away this is one of the good ones you do have space underneath to get the scalpel in and you will feel you have to work blind and you get the you can feel it with the scalpel and you par it away now that's a good one and I don't want to damage it however the one I bought from AliExpress I couldn't care less about and I've already had a good old go at this cutting away at what's underneath it it's not that simple but if you take your time you'll get there and for goodness sake always cut away from yourself don't 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 ever cut towards yourself not in this instance you will end up slashing fruit of the bone with one strike now I've done it all and I'm just demonstrating how you do it to get it apart now we take our spoon grip the thing at one end and at a distant end we pop that underneath like so flip it over you may not do virtually identical with the other side and if you're lucky a little gap starts to appear there you might have to try it a few times but you'll get there I did and and I need to release the centre one too and let's see if we can get any further Perhaps if we try releasing the end one, it may work, but as I'm gripping it, it's probably not going to work. Um, oh, I'm still in camera. <laughs> oh, yep, that's okay. I'm actually holding it apart when we're gripping it. That one's okay. That one's okay. Now we're in, take our knife and sort of, if we can find anywhere to sort of pry it apart. And this, is, this knife I've got here selected is not the best, not the best one to use. Um, notice I'm using the blunt edge of the knife all the time. And I think we're there. At least we're there on that side. Pop that out, pop that out. 
Boom. Oh, we're apart. We come apart now. And I say you take it apart without breaking any of the lugs and everything. I'll have a short slurp at this point. Very nice. Now, we're going to put this out of harm's way because if we carry on working it's bound to fall off the table and stick in my foot and I don't want that. So if Andrew's watching this video, there you go Andrew, that's how it's done. And um, there's our stepper motor, there's our cogs, and underneath there is a small printed circuit board, and we'll come to that in a moment. Now, I did say this was for a Mercedes A-Class, and the other actuator came out of a Sprinter, Mercedes Sprinter. Um, now, I've taken all the cogs out of the sprinter and we're going to take all the cogs out of the A-class. Yeah. Initially I thought the difference may be in the cogs between the sprinter and the um, A-Class Mercedes and perhaps they use different ratios or something like that so the number of teeth etc will be different. No, nope, they're all the same. So the only other thing that's left now is to have a look at the printed circuit board and to get at that we need to remove the motor and the motor and the contact are all sort of a one assembly and it comes out quite easy famous last words there we go and out she comes and we'll put that assembly oh of course that's the unbroken one so put all that over to one side and we'll flip the motor over and here we can see the chip. Here are the numbers. One on the left is 83242. The other one is 83241. Next line down is E11718B. Same on the other side, e 117 one eight B. Next line down, third line that is three one three U and three two four U. Bottom line nine two five O A eight three eight O A. Now we're given that some of these are going to be manufacturing dates and various code numbers. There's only one line that is the same number and I still think these are pre-programmed for the particular vehicle application they go in. Uh, I did say that there, if I didn't, I did say and if I didn't there were only two differences I could find. One, the chip, and we just dealt with that, and two, I'll show you as soon as I've uh, reassembled the unit. And it all clips together quite nicely, like so. And it marvels me, you know, you go, ooh. Hang on, something not quite right. normal ready for use. The only other difference I found was in the dimensions 
of uh, the spline that goes in there. And we'll come in a bit foot closer. The distance between that shoulder there, or there and there, and the opposite side. So think of it as a square, like so, is 0.2 of a millimetre, or 200 microns if you like, smaller than the diameter of this one. I call it a diameter, it's the dimensions of the square of this one. Now that may well be within manufacturing tolerances, I don't know, but it's just slightly smaller. That one's slightly smaller from the A-Class Mercedes to the Sprinter. That's the only other difference I could find, which I think is a manufacturing tolerance. Um, as I said, all a bit pointless, but now I can forget about it, and um, it's all a bit more under the bridge. I really would have liked to have changed this chip over into the this actuator so that we had a sprinter chip in this actuator. I think uh, the idea behind that would have been I could have sent three units back to Andrew that was I thought were perfectly okay. But I can't guarantee that I haven't fried this chip and I've got no way of testing it to find out whether it's okay or not. I can't find any information about it, nothing at all, so everything is conjecture. Besides all of that, Andrew doesn't want these things back, he just sent them down to me to keep me amused. If there is a lesson to be learned from this, it is that if it's held together by little clips and things, think of a method at which you stand a chance of releasing them. And don't get frustrated. Don't start sort of breaking things and sort of ending up with all the lungs busted off. It's okay, we know we can glue it together, but it, you know, it don't look right, does it? You know, it sort of goes against the grain for me. So I'll try my best, prove that I can do it, and um, I think that's probably where this is going to end. Andrew doesn't want the bits back. He sent them down to me for a bit of fun. I've had any fun. So let's call it a day.